Here we go, starting her up. Diesel preheat, this thing ain't been started in like a week. And it's actually starting to get a little bit chilly out. It's not cold. Let's get chilly. What is happening, loud and proud crowd? Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fabulous today. So, I just wanna let you guys know that you are down to the last five days, I believe, five days to enter to win the Silver Bullet third gen. Right now it's getting tuning, studs, lift pump, all new fluids. It's gonna be freaking sweet. Whoever gets this truck dead serious with you, it's gonna be nasty. I mean, stage five transmission, Super good tuning's happening right now. S463 turbo, second gen swap setup. I mean, it is just, it is incredible. Stay tuned for that truck because it's not done yet and you guys are getting an absolute beast when we reveal it. We gotta go to my dad's office. I gotta grab a paper that needs to get notarized and sent out to somebody. We need to run by my parents' house. We're gonna be working on Nasty Red for my dad because it's idling a little bit too low. I wanna make sure that idles up to like more like 650 to 750 because it is getting colder out anyway and I don't want the truck idling at 300 RPM and it can't stay running, you know, because that's not cool. We're gonna be working on Nasty Rids idle today. Just so everybody understands what I mean by we're gonna be working on the idle, I'm gonna start the truck up and I'll show you what the problem is and why it's a serious concern. Man, who just loves this freaking limited? Oh my gosh. In terms of the idle, we're having a problem and let me tell you what the issue is just so you understand what you're looking for when I start the truck up. We just got some work done to it. That has nothing to do with the idle problem. The idle problem was there before that even. And all it is, is this little, there's actually um, two separate nuts. There's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. You gotta loosen the one to raise the other and then tighten it back down. But what it does is it sets your throttle linkage, since these aren't computer driven trucks, it sets your throttle linkage at a certain point so that when you start the truck up, there's a certain amount of pressure already applied to the linkage or already off the linkage which will make it you know obviously the more you loosen it up and then tighten it back down it's going to raise that stud up out which is going to increase your pressure on the throttle lever and it's going to increase your idle the more you loosen it down it's going to decrease the pressure on that lever and it's going to lower your idle so all we got to do is raise it up a little bit it's right below the afc housing and it's kind of a little bit of a bugger to get to but it's not hard to do. It's nice and overcast. It's not hot today, so you know it should make it a little bit more enjoyable. Let me start the truck up and show you what I mean because this truck idles too low. Like it's fine if you're in park, it idles at like 400, but as soon as you drop it into drive, it drops down to like 200 RPM, and then it just like lopes and then just dies. Like it died like six times trying to do a turnaround here to back it up to park it because obviously you're in drive, reverse, drive, reverse. Anytime you're actually in gear your RPMs drop naturally. That's just how it works on these trucks or really any other truck. And uh, that's just what happens. So anyways, we're gonna get this thing started up and we're gonna let you kind of hear how low it idles and I'll try to show you on the gauge. But actually when I was parking it, it set down so light that it didn't even wanna start unless I hit the throttle. Okay, that explains it right there. I mean, that, I mean that's enough for you to see. Okay, so you guys can see the problem. And then, of course, watch what happens if I put my foot on the throttle and I give it just enough RPM to stay idling. Let's put it right there, which is where we want it. See right there? That's where we want the idle to be. Now, if I take my foot off, it maintains for a little bit, but as soon as you put it in the drive or reverse, it drops even more, the truck dies. See what I'm saying? So that's that's the problem. Um, that's the problem that we're having. And even right there, that was probably idling at 450-ish, about 500. But we don't really want that because clearly the truck keeps dying. Okay, and we're, we don't want the truck dying when we've got you know a gooseneck load on here going down the road. We're out of light. Truck freaking dies. You see what I'm saying? It's just not. It's not fun not really a joy to deal with so we want to try to get that fixed now in terms of fixing this and getting to it it's not hard to fix but it is kind of a pain in the butt to get to i'm actually not sure what all this is unless it has to do with the i don't remember ever seeing that before it's essentially back behind right below the solenoid in the afc housing which is right back here it's down below there it is dang near impossible to film so i'm not sure how much video i'm going to be able to get but it's just this little stud if you look up some other videos i'm sure there's guys that have gotten a little gopro down in there however i don't have a gopro with me i'll show you my camera right now this camera is too big 
to hide down in that little cluster of stuff. But I, I made a video on this a long time ago with another 12 out. So if you want to see it, it was a ways back there. Okay, so we made some adjustments and I'll try to explain those adjustments here in a second. So, so far, she started up and I didn't need to use my foot. This truck hasn't really warmed up much yet, so the idle's probably still gonna climb in gear and it's still at about 500. In drive and it's still at 500, which is where I like it. And then when you put it in park, it'll idle at more like 750 to 800. See what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's all preference, honestly. Like, it's not, there's not like a right or wrong way to do it. I know that there are some guys that swear by, you know, your idol has to stay at or like as the lowest, lowest, lowest it can possibly stay, you know, before the truck stalls, but it still is running because of, you know, the pump and the transmission and all that stuff, which I get that. However, I don't want my truck stalling every time I drive it. You know what I'm saying? So um, if it's not over a thousand and it's, you know, below it, at least in a hundred RPMs or 200 RPMs below a thousand, roughly when it's in park, it'll be fine because when you're at, you know, normal stoplights and stuff and you're in gear, it's not going to be like high idling at a thousand. You know what I'm saying? It's going to stay at about that 500 range. So uh, 500 to 650 range, but let's put it into drive again. Like I said, drops down to that 500 to 550 range, 600-ish, and it's totally fine. So let's take it actually down the road, and uh, I'm gonna go down the road and go to a stop after going down to the end of the road and just seeing where this truck ends out. And see if once it's warmed up a little bit, if it stalls out again or not. What this truck was doing when we picked it up is basically I could drive it around, but as soon as I go to a stop, like I'm not just like rolling, but I go to a stop at a stop sign, it would go lope, 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 die. Like it would literally just three second count after you put it into a complete stop and it was just dying. So we're gonna see how it does here at a stop. Stop sign coming up, brake is on. Let's go to a complete stop and see where the idle sits. Stop. Still at that 550 to 650 range. No stalling, no loping and dying out. Perfectly on that line right there where I want it to be and that took me about Two minutes with a 10 millimeter wrench I got the throttle linkage adjusted and I got the idle bumped up on nasty red and that was actually a lot easier than I realized it was gonna be I hadn't done that and shoot it's been over a year or so since I've done that on one of those trucks so we're on our way back to Reagan and I's house and I wanted to talk to you guys about something that there's probably been some people wondering you know I haven't shown the fifth gen dually on the channel a lot and what i say i haven't shown it i mean like you've seen glimpses of it but i mean like i haven't really talked about it or what's going on with it or what the plans are coming up with it like what's been the delay on the you know work being done to it so that it has more power and efficiency that stuff is just now starting to become available a little bit but a lot of shops still don't have the stuff to get that kind of work done under the hood. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down. Let's get to the shop back over at the house. And I'm gonna go through kind of like the things that I do and don't like about the truck five months in and what I would do different. I can't tell if this is dead or not. Nope. But man, does that truck look exactly like my dad's or what? Holy crap. Would I buy this truck again? And when we say buy this truck again, I'm talking about the trim level being a limited, the rear end being a dually, the whole thing. Let me just go through as briefly as I can and just kind of give you my thoughts on this truck. Let's get right into it. So in terms of the truck being a dually, the basic thing, let's just go into that first because I know there's going to be some people asking why the dually. The dually was just kind of something that I liked because I thought it was cool. I thought it was going to stand out on social media and stuff and be like, Wow, it's a freaking huge, wide dually, like a limited Ram dually. It definitely does get that look going down the road. Like, you just can't help but look at it. And it's not just me, trust me. I know I look at my own truck a lot, but I'm saying like going down the road, so many people are like, what the heck? Like they, they are like in shock of what they just saw because this truck is so big, it's so wide. I haven't seen another one of these around my area yet. Like I'm talking like fifth gen at all. Like I've seen a couple work trucks on the highway and stuff. So some of the fifth gens with the six fours in them and stuff, but I'm talking about like loaded out new truck. I haven't really seen many like this. And then the wrap, of course. So in terms of the dually, would I buy it again? Probably not, and I'll tell you why, but I just don't use it enough for that reason that it's designed the way that it is. We were down in Indy, we could not park anywhere. It did not fit in the lanes at all. Cars parked on the sides, on both sides going opposite ways. Like this truck did not fit in these lanes 
and I had to take up two lanes through town, it's a double one-way road, cars parked on both sides facing that way, but going down that road, I had to drive literally in the middle to give at least, you know, a foot and a half, two feet on each side of my tires, so like four feet total worth of space, but that's, you can't park in one lane going down in some of those roads and, you know, areas with a truck this wide comfortably, and it just takes up a lot of space. So in terms of the dually, would I buy the dually again? Probably not, but it is cool. Would I buy the Limited again? And let me just go through that. Why did I buy a Limited? There's probably some people wondering. Well, the reason I went with the Limited is because I thought it was the coolest package of the fifth gen. I wasn't really a huge fan of the Laramie style front ends till now with the color matched options that they have, and I think they're kind of cool. But when I was looking for this truck, this is when they first showing, like guys are like, they're, it'll be on the lot today. You know what I mean? Like they're just showing up. This was the only limited dually in the state of Indiana in, that I could find, like anywhere. Only limited dually and I wanted a dually and there were Laramies all over the place, but they were all just like the big chrome bumpers. Nothing was color matched. Like the ones that were available at the time, now they're all over the place. I'm like, I want the color match stuff. I want those headlights, the projector headlights with the LEDs. Like I want all that stuff. I think it looks better, it's cooler. I don't know if there's gonna be any aftermarket stuff out for a while yet, so I wanna get something that looks the way I want it to look right now. Is it worth paying the extra for the Limited? Because looking back now, I'm like, I mean, you would have had all that stuff, all the fancy stuff. Do I look at it now as like worth paying for it? That's to each their own. I mean, like for me personally, the Alcola wheels that were on it, hopefully I'm saying that right, I could be saying that completely wrong. The actual nice wheels that were on it, the aluminum wheels that were on it, the grill, headlights, the interior being, you know, all the cool stitching and all the cool wood grain trim, like all the fancy stuff, all the fancy gauges and stuff that are all cool designs and cool colors and all the fancy mumbo jumbo. It's definitely cool and I think to some people it can serve them well. Honestly, I would get a fully color match, you know, SRW Laramie for 58, 59,000, not this for 75 plus. You see what I'm saying? I don't think I would buy it again because I just, for me personally, I don't think I see an additional 10,000 plus dollars of the stuff there to be worth paying for it, knowing a lot of the little things that you can get on the Laramies. From a working truck standpoint, you don't need to have this truck. All my perspectives on it now that I've owned it five, six months, and to be quite honest with you, it's an awesome truck, but I don't think I would go with the Dually Limited again, just for those reasons that I don't think there's quite enough value there for me to be able to justify it. Not to mention, I don't think I use the Dually <laughs> really for what it's intended to do. However, in terms of Dually aspect, it definitely is like an eye catcher. I mean, it, it gets your attention, which since I'm a social media influencer and that's what I do, that's really the point of why I did what I did. And like it was gonna get people's attention, which it does. So from a marketing standpoint, I wouldn't trade that, but in terms of like a daily use and justifying being, you know, driving this the way that it is, that's where I'm saying it's kind of like, I don't think I'd do it again for that for that purpose. You guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Do not forget Silver Third Gen Giveaway is ending in just a few days, so do not wait any longer. Get your entries in while you can, because that truck could be yours. Thank you guys so much for all the love all the support. Let me know down in the comments below what is some content you guys would like to see. Comment down below what you want to see on this channel, what you want to see next. I need your guys' feedback. Thank you so much. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.